God bless you, Susan Waldrop, April 13, Wednesday, 2016. I love the number 13, don't you? <laughs> you know, everybody thinks of 13 or odd numbers are unlucky, but you know, for me, odd numbers have always been, I don't want to say lucky because we don't believe in luck. We believe in the power of God because there are no odds with God. <laughs> and um, the number three to me represents the Trinity. As uh, dear sister, she wrote a beautiful note. I just got so many wonderful notes coming in. And I just want, uh, the Lord put a special, special word on my heart, a scripture that's been going on through my mind actually for this whole last week. So I want to share it with you. And we're going to just take the word literal, the Lord told me today. Take the word literal. We're going to be reading from John 14, if you want to get your Bibles out. In the name of Jesus, look at our oils getting low, Lord. you got to fill it up again. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you so much for your presence, your blessing. They overflow us. Father, you open up the windows of heaven. You pour out on us blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing. We cannot contain because our mind is stayed upon you. We ask that you anoint our brain, our mind, our thoughts, keep our mind upon you, Lord God. We rebuke all foul demonic spirits and fallen angels out of our life in the name of Jesus. We pray for everyone that needs a physical touch for you today that we will be around whether we know them or whether we do not know them, that you will use us, guide us, and protect us, and that salvations will come, that we will lead someone to Christ today. And we trust you and we believe you, and we give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, let me get into this quickly. So much to share. I want to thank all the new people that have subscribed to the YouTube channel. It is going bananas again. It seems like it, it'll level off and then all of a sudden, whoop, there comes a whole bunch of subscribers and it'll level off a little bit and whoop, there it goes again. So I just love you. I want to bless you and say welcome, welcome. It's an honor. It's a privilege to speak something positive into your life. That's the only reason God told me to get on here a couple years ago, pray for the people, believe for signs, wonders, miracles. He told me he was going to do the healing. He was going to heal people. He was going to speak life into people and that signs, wonders, and miracles and the scripture that he's leading me to do to speak to you today. I'm going to share with you greater works greater work. So we're going to get into that in just a minute. Okay. I want to read a couple of comments that, well, several, I'll just can only read a few. I want to thank all of the people that have donated to the ministry. Again, thank you so much, Lord Jesus. We thank you. And we ask that you return it 1000 fold because you're a big God, Lord. And we believe in asking big that we would take the lid off of what we think and hopefully be open to whatsoever you will bless us with. The abundance, the overflow, the signs, the wonders, the healing, the jobs needed whatsoever, the finances that need to come into the homes, Lord, and everything in the name of Jesus and marriages reconciled in the name of Jesus. And people are looking for new, uh, they're saying, should I be wondering about a new relationship? What should I be doing? Let me tell you, if you want to be with someone, get in the flow of what God has you doing, because when you are in that flow, you go, God is going to bring those people in your circle of what you're doing for God. That's how you will meet the right person. I was uh, doing some meetings uh, a couple of summers ago in uh, Panorama City, actually, with a pastor friend of mine, uh, Pastor William Neeson, a Syrian church of Nineveh, and did some meetings uh, summer over there. And I said, Lord, I need someone to help me get started with this video pr production again, because it had been years that I had done that. 
God just brought the guy right in there. And he sat down. He said, what can I do? He said, God brought me here. What do you need? And this is the way it is. If you're looking for a relationship, you're looking for promotion in your business, whatsoever you're looking for, God has that answer. All you got to do is get in that right pool. Get in that right swimming pool with the Lord and be about your father's business. And he says, when you seek me and all my righteousness, then everything you need will be added unto you. Your first order of business is not to look for a person, not to think in man's ways. No, 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 no. Give it all up to Jesus. He already knows what you want, what you need, all of that. And he said that he will give you your heart's desires. But there's a way to bring the right people into your circle because you don't want to go out and have the wrong person show up in your life you know you just you, you that's why you're wanting something that's correct this time you want the right thing you want the god thing okay diana writes powerful message sister regarding yesterday's message the lord told me actually i couldn't stop thinking about a wedding dress and it just hit me hit me hit me every time i was going to my closet i just had this urgency like get ready for your wedding get ready for your go put on something you'd wear to a wedding i went to go paint my my toes the other day and it was like, I looked at all the colors of the paint because, you know, I, I just wear natural on my hands because I like that. I feel better that way. But I wanted to paint my toes. And no, I'm not going to show you my toes. So anyway, I looked at all the colors and it was like, what color should I put on? Because I didn't do anything, right? <laughs> Nobody's going to, it's not going to bother anybody. So I just saw this light pink with like fairy dust in it. It was so pretty. And I said, that's what I want. That's what I want. So it's a very natural color with like little fairy dust. And so, yes, here I am. I'm, I am a walking stardust for the Lord. <laughs> I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. And you should be too. Get ready. <laughs> okay, Diana, powerful message, sister. Isn't this crazy? You never know what you're going to talk about. Never know. At least maybe I'm entertaining, right? No, we don't want entertainment. I'm joking. Powerful message, sister. It is so difficult to even convince Christian loved ones to focus more on Jesus instead of the pettiness of life. I had a vision days ago of a woman's wound with the face of Jesus like the shroud coming out of it. He is coming soon. God bless you. Amen. He is. He, we are all going to, it's like we all have, it's, it's so very true what you're saying, Diana. It's like the, a woman's wound with the face of Jesus, like on the shroud coming out of it. It's so true. We're coming out. We're so close to coming out. It's like those little chickens that hatch, you know, and they're peck, 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 pecking. And you start to see, start to see. Only with us, it's going to be. Boom! <laughs> We're going to go out like a rocket. <laughs> I saw a movie the other night on TV. I caught the tail end of it. I don't watch the whole movie. I don't have time for movies. But it was about the rapture. And I had my little granddaughter with me, you know. And I'm always looking for something that's going to be spiritually inspiring that she will remember when she is in this secular school that she is in. So anyway, I'm always looking for these little jewels to, you know, soak her little spirit with. And so I found this, uh, you just caught this little video of these two guys and they're holding hands and the light, it's like a, you know, it's like a Star Trek where the light beams and they're going up, going up. And one guy's going up and the other guy's coming up, coming up. And he's, he, this guy's reaching out for his hands and he's saying, take my hands, take my hands. And the other guy goes, okay, okay. So they lock hands and boom, they go right up. It was so good. It was so good. It just reminds me, you know, I can't wait. And I know you feel the same way. Can you imagine two thousand years it has been two thousand years we're going home so soon so soon it's like that's all i want to talk about i got i got to read a couple of these comments i, I do want to do that i want to spend time to pray at the end hang in there because i'm going to pray we're all going to pray together for your healing and your loved ones i want to read a few of these comments read scripture that the lord gave me and then we're going to pray 
Okay, Diana, powerful message, sister. Moving on down, Andy, thank you so much, Susan. Been following you for almost a year, and you have been a blessing in my life. Thank you, God, for Susan. Thank you, God, for you, Andy. Thank you, God, for everyone watching. And thank you, God, that you're using me, Father. I thank you. I thank you. I love you, Lord. And this is the only reason that we would learn to be a blessing for each other and that you would impart, Father, your divine words for us, your rhema words, your now words that we need daily to help us get through life. Amen. Roger, God bless you, Susan. I had a very good drive home tonight. I was with a new co-worker and another hoping a hoping a ride back with us, hoping, hoping to ride back with us or hopping a ride <laughs> whenever you were together. That's all that matters. Turns out the new guy is a Christian like me. The other guy was asking about our beliefs. He's the one who was curious about my faith. I mentioned a few weeks ago. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit guided both of us to speak the Lord's word like a tag team as our curious guy asked more and more questions. <laughs> a 45-minute ride seems so short. Thank you for your message. It was very positive. May God bless you always. 45-minute ride. Boy, you know, it's like time flies when you're doing something you love. Time flies when you're in the presence of God, you know. That's why I just wish they'd take all the clocks right off of the walls in church. I mean, why do they have clocks, right? If you're coming there to worship God, if you have an appointment in the first place that's more important than your appointment with God, you need to cancel it for the whole day. So when you go to church, you can just sit there and there's, you know, if you get hungry, you have to go eat, get up and go. But we don't need to be reminded, oh, it's 12 o'clock, five minutes to 12. We all better go now because we got to go to Denny's or wherever you're going. <laughs> No, we need to just take that clock off, don't we? I know you agree with me. Under a twilight sky said, Last month in prayer, I asked the Lord if he was really coming soon. That night I had a dream from the Lord. In the dream, I was told by the Holy Spirit to get ready. I only had seven minutes to put on my wedding gown. <laughs> the Holy Spirit was my friend. The Holy Spirit was my friend in the dream, and he said he is. He is my friend everywhere I go. I asked the Holy Spirit, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do I wear? And he talks to me. You know, when the Holy Spirit is your friend, a friend is someone you talk to. And people that think, well, you can't talk to the Holy Spirit. You have to go to the Father. Hey, I go to the Father too, but I also talk to the Holy Spirit. If you don't want to talk to him, you don't have to, but I do. <laughs> like We got a great relationship. <laughs> And it's funny, you know, he is the ultimate comedian. He He's the funniest one because he will, what do they call that, trump you every time, every time, every time. It's like, why bother? <laughs> he's so far beyond our brain, right? Okay, the Holy Spirit was my friend in the dream, and he said, Jesus is coming now, and he has gifts. This is who you've been waiting for. I woke up having such an urgency in my spirit that Jesus was on his way. Amen. That's, that's a given. Lori, my 14-year-old son, Dylan, told me about a dream he had just about something like ash filling the sky from a volcano or something else. He wasn't sure. It's funny. You know, I just read this this morning. This was actually posted 21 hours ago, but I just caught because I've been super busy. So I just caught up this morning these notes and last night, the Lord had me researching Yellowstone because, you know, that's a big concern. And I mean, a couple of years ago, was it? Or was it last summer? I think it was last summer in 15. They shut down the park. They ushered a lot of people out because that is a super volcano. And the road was melting. There's pictures of it on there. And so, you know, if the road, the, the tar is melting and buckling, it's like, can you imagine how hot it must be underneath there? So I was into the Lord had me into this researching about Yellowstone. And it's funny here. You write about this, Lori, about your son, your 14 year old son, Dylan, had this dream about something like ash filling the sky, which is exactly what uh, from a volcano 
or something else. It could be, could be Yellowstone. Who knows what God is showing him. He said that he was surprised because we were fine and he and had food to eat and all was well. He said he never remembers dreams and these two were so strong and he couldn't get them out of his mind. See, that's when God sends you a dream. You can't get it out of your mind. It's like when God gives me a song. You know, one lady wrote me and she says, oh, Susan, I love your songs. They just, I can't get them out of my mind. They're like, you know, and I find that too. Some of the songs God gives me, it's like I keep, it keeps going over and over and over in my mind. Everywhere I go, I'm singing this song and I'm like, you know, when something is a mind sticker, it's like that song, uh, that commercial when I was, I'm, a, I'm not going to say when I was a kid, but I was a kid. And, and I know Joey Canyon will remember this one <laughs> because he was my era is we still are aren't we joey we're still hanging out here okay uh that you remember that you don't it, those of you that are in california there was a commercial of a business on firestone and i hated that song but you know even if you hate something and it's a mind sticker you can't get it out of your mind and to this very day you ask me uh where where it is and i'll just uh i can repeat it right to you what is it now it's uh two blocks off the santa ana freeway 11980 east firestone stanley chevrolet <laughs> okay i hate that song i could not stand it you know what i couldn't get it out of my mind that's why they do commercials on the secular tv you know stuff that is so annoying and here it is here it is here it is. <laughs> oh, well. Amber, I remember you talking about the temple of B-A-A-L. I'm not even going to pronounce it. Everybody pronounces it differently. Being built this month. I heard that it's supposed to be built on April 19th, which happened to be my anniversary of my wedding, actually, many, many years ago. <laughs> That's so funny. And here it is your birthday, Amber, you say April 19th, as well as my husband is supposed to go to surgery at 730 that morning, which he will need lots of prayers for the surgery to go very well and for fast healing. Thank you, Susan. God bless. Father, we lift up Amber's husband for this surgery that's scheduled April 19, which is just a couple days away. Father, we bathe him in prayer in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We're just going to praise you, Lord. That's really what I'm feeling led to do because you say, praise me, praise me. You've asked me. Now, from here point forward, praise me, praise me. And that's when a lot of miracles actually happen is when we Stop asking. I was just telling a lady that the other day in the hospital when I was in to see my mother. I said, you know, we can ask and we can ask and we can ask. I know it was a head nurse on her case. That's who I was talking to, the case manager, right? And I mean, I let that lady have it, you know? And she was just like, she has to listen because it's her job to listen to me, you know? So I was just giving her the gospel. And I said, I, people all over the wor world, you know, are, are living for Jesus because everyone knows he's coming, he's coming. And she's just all eyes, you know? And so anyway, I just told her, I said, because she deals with a lot of people all the time, you know? And so I said, you have to act as though you're already healed. This is the key. He said, ask and believe. You know, the Lord always told me years ago, believe if you'll only believe. And that's the hardest part for so many people. They just, you know, they continue to ask and ask and they're asking forever for whatever that they're asking God for. You need to ask him once, leave it on the altar, and then we thank you, Father. And that is the key. You continue to act as though it's already done. Okay, Janet writes, Susan, I just drove east on 144 through Tulsa. I saw federal police on a car. What is that? About a mile down the road, I saw a tanker truck also heading east. The diamond warning signs said an uh, an annihilation, a n n i l a t i o n, an annihilation hazard and toxic. 
what's going on? Couldn't take a picture because I was driving. Yeah, to be careful driving. We don't need anybody in accidents. Um, well, all I know is these, you know, the, to me, these are like little road signs. When I see things like a lot of us, God will give us numbers or, you know, um, like Minister Paul, God gives him numbers and, you know, he's in that groove right now where God is pouring out a lot of signs to him and his wife, he and his wife. So I just say, these are all little road signs and they wouldn't probably mean much to somebody that's not saved, but to us. They are signs and you'll know it because your spirit will bear witness. See, that's how you know, because you've got the Holy Spirit with you 24 seven. And as I always ask the Holy Spirit, what's this? What's that? And, you know, he'll usually give me some kind of an answer, you know, and, and then I feel like a ding dong after I asked him because, you know, it's like, how can I miss it? But to me, these are just road signs. Federal police means, yeah, the federal, but the police will be taking over the country soon. We know that. Um, a tanker uh, with the warning signs, annihilation hazard. Yeah, annihilation is going to Hazard means it could, hazard means it could happen, you know, that it's danger, stay away. And toxic means poison. What's going on? Yeah, that's just, these are road signs, uh, spiritual signs that God is putting right in front of your face. Like when I looked up at the sky and I saw the other day the sky and it was like in layers and the middle part of the sky was further than the top and the bottom part of the sky it was so unusual and it was like i could hear the trumpets and i just saw by the spirit jesus in that four uh way back in the foreground is it and that i knew he was coming 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 and any minute now any nanosecond now he's gonna appear it's so exciting dennis Hi, Susan, I know you're going to, I know you're going to read this. Yes, I am, Dennis. <laughs> Today you spoke of the sky. I just wanted you to know that this morning, here we go, see how God works. <laughs> like I'm talking about the sky, and then the very next thing I'm reading is the sky. Uh, Today you spoke of the sky. I just wanted you to know that this morning, walking my dog, Otto, what a cute name, Otto, I saw a beautiful rainbow in the southeast sky. Very unusual for sunny Tucson, especially in the morning and an odd direction, I thought. Received your oil yesterday. It is delightfully heavenly. Blessings, Dennis, in Oro Valley, Arizona. Amen. It's all signs. God is coming. That's, that's it. And then Richard wrote quite a lengthy one here. Speaking about numbers, you know, I was saying that we're all seeing like threes and three, 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 and a, maybe a four in there or something. And so he speaks, Richard's comment talks about three is, of course, divine or divine completeness or perfection. It's the heavenly Holy Spirit filled number. The three in one, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Jesus prayed three times in the Garden of Gethsemane before his arrest. He was placed on the cross at the third hour of the day, 9 a.m., and died on the ninth hour, 3 p.m. There were three hours of darkness that covered the land while Jesus was on the cross. There were three hours of darkness that covered the land while Jesus was on the cross. You know, I'm seeing right now, I mean, I'm just seeing into this. So, you know, I'm not saying this is God saying this or anything like that. I'm just saying three hours of darkness that covered the land while Jesus was on the cross. And we see, feel so much right now that we are in darkness on our land awaiting the Lord's coming back. So you might say that we're and we many of us are being crucified in other lands for their belief in the cross and Jesus. So <clears throat> three hours of darkness. There's something there. I don't know what it is, but there's there's a little message there, I feel. So maybe God will give that to somebody um, and you'll post it so we can all read it. Um, there were a, there were three hours of darkness that covered the land while Jesus was on the cross. There's also three is also the number of resurrection. 
Christ arose after three days and three nights in the tomb. Thirty-three. Now, number two, thirty-three. After three years of ministry, Jesus died at the age of thirty-three. His death and resurrection filled all the Old Testament promises concerning the Messiah. Thus, the number thirty-three is connected to the promise. In particular, to God's promise of salvation to humanity. Okay, now he moves into 333. Number 333 is divine completeness to the third power. Also, there are 27 books in the New Testament, which is 3 times 3 times 3, or completion to the third power. Thus, 333 may represent completion of the 2,000-year age of grace represented by the New Testament, which is what Jesus initiated at 33, the age of grace. The world and the unbelievers will experience great tribulation. The world and the unbelievers will experience great tribulation. This age of grace has lasted about 2,000 years. This is about the same period of time that God gave the Jews, his chosen people, to recognize and believe in him. Number four, three plus three plus three equals nine. The nine is the last digits and thus marks the end. Biblically, the number nine represents final the, the finality or judgment, the tribulations of the book of Revelation. Wow, that's like so heavy duty, you know. I, I love studies like this because it helps us to understand, you know, so much more and, and to think about these things and ask the Holy Spirit for him to, you know, uh, reveal his divine depth to this because there's always depth. Okay, I don't know how much time we have actually taken, but I wanted to read a little bit from John 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. This is so positive. I love John 14 because it's so positive. It fills us with positive uh, scripture that we can hold on to. And also, of course, the very favorite one that I love is the one that said we will do more than greater works than I. Number 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you loved me, you would you would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. This isn't what I was looking for, though. I was looking for the one that said I will do greater, greater, under, un, greater. I will do greater. That we will do greater. That we will do good. Okay, number 12. Here we go. See, I'm not a Bible scholar, but I do read the word and have anyway. Verily, verily, I say unto you that he believeth on me the works. Verily, verily, I say unto you. This is Jesus. That he Believeth on me, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. You see, if we were not destined to do greater works than God, he wouldn't have told us this. Jesus wouldn't have told us this. And what, number 13, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, in the name of Jesus, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will. It's not I might. It's not I will someday. It's I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. You see, even the Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, 
neither knoweth him, but ye know him. You see right there, he calls the Holy Spirit a him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Thank you, Jesus. Such powerful words. If we just slow this thing down and we just soak in each word. I never try to rush scripture. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live. Ye shall all live also. Ye shall live also. And that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye, that means you, in me, Jesus says, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. You see, that means he will manifest himself to us while we're on earth. Why would we need him to manifest himself when we go to heaven? Because we're going to see him. When we will shall be changed, we shall be like him. We shall be with him. We will know all things, see all things. We shall see him face to face. But now it is dimly. We prophesy in part. We, you know, all these things are done in little bits. But when we shall see him, we shall be changed in an instant. And then we shall know all things. And we won't even need faith because we'll, you know, it's like now. Sometimes we're up with our faith. Sometimes it's a struggle. But he says, if you love me. He will keep my words and my Father will love him and we will come unto him be, and make our abode with him. If Jesus and the Holy Spirit is living, we are the home of the Holy Spirit. Did you ever think about that? You know, we go to our home each night. We put the key in. We step inside. You see, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, he has, the, he is the door, but he's waiting for us to open up our key to open our door of our heart. That's why Jesus says, behold, I knock at the door. Whosoever answers, whosoever answers, I will come in and I will sup with him. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. That's how you can remember things that you couldn't remember. You, How in the world could I remember that? The Holy Spirit brings it to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, that's what he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Jesus gives us his peace. Some people don't want it. Some people are afraid of it. Some people have pride issues. Some people, well, no, I can do it all myself. I don't need it. Why would you not receive a free gift from God that's going to make your life so much easier? He that loveth, now wait a second, let me, peace I give you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We're not to walk in fear or trouble or any of that, because uh, perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee, is where we need to be. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and I come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I go into the Father for my Father is greater than I. Right there. 
Jesus says his father is greater than him. Did you know that is in there? And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is, is come to pass, you might believe. When what is to come to pass? When the day Jesus comes for us is come to pass, then we will definitely believe. There won't be any more doubt. He knows we're just human. But he did give us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit leads and guides us into all truth for his name's sake. Hereafter I will not talk Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Who is the prince of this world? I think you know who that is. The fallen angel Lucifer, and hath nothing in me, and hath nothing in me. Satan has nothing in Jesus. There's nothing about Jesus when it comes to Lucifer, no comparison, but that the world may know that I love the Father. And as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do arise, let us go hence. You know, I love where it says at the very last, arise and let us go hence. That means whatever you're facing today, rise up with Jesus in your heart. Rise up with the Holy Spirit, the Comforter in you, and go hence. What is hence? Hence means wheresoever he leads you. Remember that song, where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him all the way. That's all he wants. He wants us all the way. That's all he ever asks. And this is where the Lord says to stop today. So I stop. Father, we pray now for everyone that needs a touch from you. We thank you. Lord, we ask once, touch and heal all of the situations, whether they be physical ones, the Lord says, put your hand on that place and thank me. Do you want a mighty miracle? Then believe on me, the Lord would say. Not on any human, but on me, the Lord would say to you, and I shall do it for it shall bring glory unto the father which is greater than me jesus says believe all things are possible to them that believe in my name in my name in my name if you'll only believe we thank you lord we love you lord we know you're moving, moving, moving all across the globe right now. You're moving in each home. You're moving to that one sitting in that overstuffed chair. You're moving to that one sitting in that hospital bed. You're moving to that one sitting in the office. You're moving to that one sitting in the car. You're moving, touching, healing, completing, restoring, renewing everything. The mind is being healed. Thank you, Jesus. The ears. Thank you, Jesus. He says, I do all these things. We give you all the glory, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you. Now, Lord, all of our loved ones that have not come in, we thank you. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. In Jesus' wonderful name. In Jesus' wonderful name. Now, go about your day. Thank him 
as though it's already done. For you must flip your mind over, stop asking, begin thanking, and believe. Believe it. Believe it. Why would you doubt his word? Why would you doubt he would be a respecter of persons? He's no respecter of persons. What he does for one, he'll do for another. His greatest miracles are right where you are. Not in some huge coliseum, but they're right where you are because he's intimate. He says, I'm an intimate. Someone's crying. God is releasing you of all that stuff you've held on to. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Someone's facing an impossible situation. He's saying it's impossible, it's impossible. Someone's going to lose their house. You have all the bills laid out on the table. Jesus says, trust me. Trust me. Thank you, Jesus. You're the miracle worker. You are the miracle worker. We give you all the glory. We love you. We believe you, Lord. Now bless everyone, Father, that is given to this ministry. Let it return 1,000-fold. And thank you, Father, that those that send in their prayer requests, praise reports that we can together as a body lift them up to you, Jesus. Bless us. Keep us. All our ways until we meet again. Until we meet again. A famous thing I heard I'll see you in the morning. The Lord has used that so many times because it's a message. I'll see you in the morning. I'll see you when the Lord comes for us. I'll see you until it is finished we work and we will see each other in the morning in the morning no more darkness on this planet we will be like him i love you have a blessed day in him <laughs>